Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hey there, welcome to our coffee break. Just Connie and I today. Mm -hmm. Cheers. As, yeah, cheers. Darlene had meetings, so, so miss you, Darlene. Yeah, exactly. But you know, we are ready for our Halloween and all things pumpkin y. Yeah. And uh, so for. Direct decked out in my Halloween colors. We decided for, we wouldn't, we wouldn't dress up in our in, in any kind of garb, but you know, it's, it's back, a fun time of year. I will tell you, back in the day. I, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Connie was my neighbor forever on Saddle Hill Road, and um, you were the one who was game to get totally dressed up, and you used to volunteer, tell us, yeah. Oh, so once upon a time, uh, <laughs> the original H HCA, um, it's the, gone the through some, house, yeah. you know, when it was in the little house, did this haunted house. Yeah. And this was way back, the high school wasn't even finished, you park in fields that are yeah. now the parking lot, <laughs> and they did this amazing haunted house. And the first year I did it, I was definitely underprepared with... Um, I just had a witch's costume on. Yeah. But I got smart. And after that, literally, I want to say they took notes from me on yeah. the Walking Dead show. This I was, was a really, really <laughs> It would take me maybe an hour or two to get the makeup on, but it would take me three hours to get the makeup off. Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. it just, you, you know. Well, back then, that haunted house was scary. Oh, my gosh. It was in that old you know, was, white house, you know, the, the original house on the property, and it was all, you know, dark. You oh, know, my goodness. Um, Things would pop out at you. Strobe people. lights and whatnot. I mean, the ghoul. In fact, they had to tone it down because little kids, I mean, would freak them right out. I mean, well, they would put the ages and parents it, would still bring little kids. Yeah, I, I remember know. kicking uh, my husband because he brought her daughter who was in second grade. And, like, and she, she had a hard time. Her. <laughs> she had a hard time looking at me at home. Right, 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 right. Like, oh, okay. oh my God! But those are so funny. But, but you yes. know, but you know, it's about something about Californians. I mean, everybody all across the country loves Halloween. But yes. Californians, I think, are notoriously like into it. Isn't that so? Didn't they have a reputation because the weather was always great? And you could go oh, well, out, you, you know. definitely we had great weather. You know, not and, that and, New England's and, not. I mean, no, but here. I lived in California for twenty-two years. I didn't yeah. go up there, but um, my kids when we moved here were between the ages, my youngest was four and my oldest was nine and my middle son seven. So so there were a few Halloweens. Yeah. And I was absolutely starting to decorate, you know, I, I a couple of times went as ghouls and witches. Well you would be the one then. that would go out with your kids. See, and, and you know, your ex husband would do the would be at home and give out the candy. Well we would take turns. Did you? Yeah, yeah. we would take turns because sometimes Brad and Dave would go out and the yeah, other I guess dads so. I would go out yeah. but um, but I definitely loved when I could dress up and go out with them. Yeah. But my kids were like, Mom, you got to stay away. <laughs> it's a fun time to kind of, you know, express yourself. Like, you know, I was working for a corporation then, and I remember, you know, everybody would come dressed up in something. I remember having a blue wig and just wearing that, just regular clothes. And I had this really crazy, really pretty, but it was this, this blue um, wig or just some crazy glasses. Or, yep. I don't know, just... Um, that's how you sell like you just inhibitions well, or whatever. Well, certainly the the holiday, yeah. uh, and it has become quite a holiday, has morphed and, and changed. Yeah. And I, you know, as a kid, um, my costume was something of uh, cheap and probably flammable oh, yeah, we'll costume. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then a mask that yeah. you bought. And every now and then we made our own. Um, and we get into the makeup big time. You know, we do the, you know, you know well, the bridezillas and whatnot. Now, so I, that was not something that I was introduced to until later as an adult. Yeah. Um, but, you know, kid trick-or-treating, of course, you stopped when you were, you know. I remember years ago you with an old started. boyfriend, we went to a Halloween party. And, you know, when you're in your 20s or whatever, these things are, you know, mad pack. We get to the Halloween party. Everyone's dressed to the nines in an outfit. We get to the party. And we realized, hours later, we were at the wrong party and didn't <laughs> even know the people. But everybody was in costume, so we're there and just rolling oh, with yes. it. And then we couldn't leave. It was the worst Halloween. I mean, in some ways, so we had gotten in the, you know, cars were parked all in the yard. And then we're like, wait a minute, I don't think this is a party. You know, we, we don't know who these people are. And then we tried, we were stuck for the whole time at this, I'll never forget oh, well. that, because the costumes. Because the costumes, <laughs> you didn't <didn't> recognize anything. <laughs> We didn't at first, and then all of a sudden, we, said, we don't know anybody in this place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the wrong party. <laughs> so, so um, you know, yeah. over the years, I mean, it used to be that we got hordes of kids. Oh, yeah. And I think it's turned 
people back are safety. around. Yeah. There's neighborhood events, but then there's some daylight parties that are had, and, and things have changed a little bit. Yeah. But I did want to, and we were just researching before the show, mm -hmm. that sewing is the Celtic holiday, over 2,000 years old, and it was the celebration of the end of summer, the harvest festival, but it was also picking up the veil of the other world. So mm. they were the ones tying in the other world component. Right. The historical, you know, sort of a, a pagan harvest, because, you know, back in those days it was well, all about the, the seasons. Well, the pagans actually, I think, are more the Christmas holiday, and this was a Celtic holiday, not necessarily but, uh, pagan. But aren't, I think they were pagan back in those days. Uh, the Celts were a little different. Were they? Yeah. But I think uh, every back but in yes. the Middle Ages, it was all about the seasons, the harvest. Yep. I mean, that's how they understood, you know, religion and spirituality and these customs around, you know, that were seasonally yep. based is where I thought some of this came from. Well, well, and it definitely it was, was seasonal. It was yeah. the harvest, but then that sort of other piece to it about the right. other world, which... You know, Which is pretty, gives it the it. spooky feel. And this sense of, you know, dying, you know, the harvest, the world, you know, is, you know this, this part yep. of the world where it gets cold and there's, you know, nothing growing and we're going into this hibernation period, yep. you know, sparks some things, um, you know, for the Celtics, for, there's, in, in other religious arenas. So, um, Mexico yeah. has the Day of the Dead. The Day of the Dead, yeah. And theirs is just simply a celebration of re relatives that right. have passed. passed away. And yeah. so for them, it's a huge festival in a positive light, honoring all their family that have, have passed. Even though the imagery looks scary, like dressed up skeletons. Yeah, but if you look carefully, the skeletons aren't ghoulish. They're like bright colors. What does I mean, dressed up skeletons? Yeah, I mean, to me, they're, they're actually beautiful and very fascinating. Yeah. I mean, it's not the zombie. Oh, yeah, not that. I know it's just, yeah, it's interesting. I and, and the Catholics have All Souls Day, which yeah. is, This year I falls guess, on November 2nd, I yeah. happen to, to yeah. see. But, you know, this celebration of the lives that have gone before. Yep. Yep. And some people don't like Halloween at all. I don't know why. I mean, you know, it's just not their thing. Or like fall and autumn and gourds, but not... <laughs> And then, you know, you'll see going around, if you haven't already, some of the um, photographs of old Halloween in America. The American, you should Google old Halloween costumes, where they were certainly handmade, but they were definitely ghoulish, like little children pretty, in, pretty nasty with looking. actual gourd heads on. I mean, it's just, they're pretty freaky. Yeah. Yeah. Well, nowadays, you know, we have the whole um, uh, superheroes oh, and... Yeah. and uh, you know, the cartoon characters, right. and then there's always popular with whatever the politician or the star. Oh, they're gonna, th that'll know, be funny, I'm sure, on college um, campuses or yeah. wherever else. Or adult parties. I mean, oh, well, well and not, you know, not adult parties in that way, but thinking about what grown-ups do on Halloween, if anything. Yeah. So I think um, there's a Halloween party at TJ's. Oh, I've, I've true. read, yeah, so I'm sure, you know, same costumes. Um, we've been invited to a friend's house for oh. sort of a Halloween, you know, thing. So, um, I don't... Well, so over the years, what was one of your favorite costumes or one of your favorite kids' costumes? Mm, you know, we were pretty, pretty typical. I mean, you know, I was, a, I guess, a vain young woman. I, we would always... I, <laughs> we are trying to look cute, you know. And, uh, sure. I was never trying to look sure. like a ghoul. I was sure. trying to, you know... Look, yeah, I guess I didn't glam. have a problem with that. <laughs> Fulfill my glam fantasies. I'll have to though. find one of the pictures, and maybe uh, if I can dig it up, I'll share yeah, it. It's pretty but, traditional. Oh my God. I mean, as a third grade, I remember dressing up as a bride. I love my bride costume with a veil and the whole thing. Oh, I mean, well, yeah. actually, one of my favorite costumes was actually done by my son, and I thought it was incredible. Oh, clever. You had, your kids had some funny one. But this one was pretty. He dressed up in a business suit, he got Remember glasses that. on, had a suitcase. Or not a, a briefcase. Uh, they, yeah. A briefcase. And people are like, well, what are you? And he <laughs> goes, I'm the scariest thing you've ever seen. I'm the IRS. I'm the tax man. <laughs> <laughs> but it was funny because he was like, he thought of it all himself. I was like, no. oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> Sixth grade, I mean, it's funny because yes. he was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. And he, 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 I remember that he had some glasses. Yes. I mean, he was like totally, and where does he work now? Not for the IRS, but Ernst and Young. Ernst I mean, Young, he's my capitalist. He's right. a businessman. So he, you yeah, know, that's so he's funny. trying to make banking safe for America yeah. and, and making certain the rules are being followed. Go, yeah. Connor, absolutely. Yeah. But those the are consulting so funny. Arm, though, oh, yeah. The regulatory arm, but helping banks be compliant. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 
No, but I remember my, my son loved that scream oh, mask. I remember that. My son, Two ever years since. in a row. Oh, exactly. Some of them went They would wear that. Similar. I mean, there's always some oh kind of monstery gosh. thing. We have, I have pictures of them. And you can't tell yes, who. Because they're just all <laughs> cooled you know. out. Yeah. 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 And then my, my daughter was in, I mean, she'd do all the kind of traditional fun things sometimes. But, you know, what's really wonderful and fun to me are the Halloween costumes at the high school. Oh. Uh, I can't wait to see what the kids come up with this year. I, I mean, love it. The seniors, they, I think it is. Yeah. They do some of the best, yeah. and they're so clever. And I, I just, every year, right. it, it's always entertaining. And H Camp films it, too. Okay, so you watch it. Oh, yeah, you got so to do that. Fun. Yeah. So much fun. Absolutely. So, oh, cool. So, uh, yeah. But yeah, you know, but uh, we're both empty nesters. If ever yeah. Know. We have you know, raised our beautiful children in this lovely town. They're all doing well. Now it's just yeah. us chickens, right? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you My oldest is out. planning a wedding. Yes, that's so exciting for 2019. What's yep. the date? Is there a date? Uh, we don't have a date yet. Okay. Come well, on. you know, I'm like, okay, this it's this their problem. The first one officially. The yeah, first that's one. a big step. So that's a big I am, step. I mean, I'm looking for a mother of the groom dress. Oh, oh so, indeed. Yeah, oh, that'll yeah. be fun. Well, we'll have to go shopping with you and pick. I'll pick. <laughs> I'm just happy both my kids have significant others, and they're happy with them, and we love them, and so forth. But enough about kids. Let's talk about us. Yeah. Uh, so what so are forth. you doing? What's going on? Well, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. But, you know, um, I just think about the changes, the changes transitions. I mean, you know, fall, this is fall. A, yeah. a lot of transitions. A lot of transitions, you know, looking to downsize in lots of ways and looking to, in this stage of life, what are fun things that people my age are doing? I mean, clearly, as much in denial as I am about aging, I mean, well, but and, it's and but you know, we're both in yeah. uh, levels transition. Darlene's not here. But, yeah. Um, I, I think it's you no know, secret that uh, my ex left me seven plus years ago. Yeah. It seems like, but uh, but now I'm in a very committed relationship. And very I think committed. In fact, I, I said agree. yes. I said yes. She said yes to the guy. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm no, we're uh, actually going to get married. I think. I think he's thinking. Oh my goodness. Okay, I thought this was going to be simple, and and I'm not going to do. I, I just want to do a big party. Yeah. I yeah. just want to, you know, I, I'm course. excited. Well, and I want a well, big party. Well, that's the whole point. I mean, that life after, like, Hopping Up is all about families and kids. And then when you're on the other side of that, kids are grown and gone, whether you, you know, stay together or you don't. I mean, you're in this X stage of doing other things. Yeah. And the idea, and I love your story in terms of, you know, it's very sad when a long-term marriage um, dissolves. But there's, you know, happiness on the other side of that. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, it's... You know, we talk now about, I mean, goodness, dating over 50. It's got to be worse than high school. Uh, high, oh, God. I know. It's, it does feel, you think you have it all together, you're grown, you've got your mind, your, you know, money, your stuff. I mean, whatever situation you're in, you're in, in you know, in rare form, but you feel so vulnerable well, starting out well, again. Well, first of all, um, you, at least in high school, everybody was single. Right. And suddenly, you're in this pool of, is there anybody out there that's single? Yeah. And the easiest way to find a single person is via the internet. And, and I find that to be sketchy and sucks. And I have, like, <sighs> yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, but yet there's so many wonderful uh, yeah. success uh, stories from that process. Sure. But even young people are they, I know. And, and even the rules of the game. Are change, have changed yes. since we were in high school, and they're changing all the time with the Me Too movement, and everyone's on notice and alert around, you know, permission, consent. You know, back in the day, you looked for a guy who would be assertive and, you know, make his intentions known. Well, about, you, know, you know, it. I mean, it's it, there but now. A, like yeah, scary. It, it's, 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 <laughs> The whole thing is scary. At, at times you want to have the grown-up conversation, and then you're like, no, I don't want to go there. <laughs> <I know. laughs> so, so it's, yeah, it's, but it's, it's yeah, definitely a challenge. But on the flip mm -hmm. side, I think it's very hopeful, and it's very exciting. And, exactly. And I think um, it is, you know, at, at our last show we talked about aging parents and, yes. and, and their activities and how vibrant. And I think that goes for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're vibrant. We're engaged. 
we're doing things, we're involved. Absolutely. Um, and we have the flexibility in our lives that we, you know, when you're in the throes of your career and, you know, raising children, that you really don't have a lot of extra bandwidth. No. This is the luxury of this age is where children are gone, you're pretty well set, your job or career is in a, you know, you know yeah. you're on top of it 100% and you've got extra time. Yeah. And, and still a lot of energy. Yeah. So this is where you see, and we worry about, you know, sitting on boards and so forth. That's great, but then you, sometimes we have too many people that are of my age on the, in, you know, in yeah. these roles, and we try to bring young people in. It's hard because they're busy raising well, families. It, that's true. But, yeah. uh, but talking about, so what are some of the fun things you're doing? Kind of finding yourself oh, yeah. well, you know, really single. Yeah. And, and yes, I have to put it out there too. So I'm in transition as well, and this is real, really new relatively really new. But, but what are the things you're doing? Well, you know, I can't say, well, I find, you know, you know me, I'm, my work provides a social outlet. Yep. So my clients I become it. friends. I work with these, you know, broadly diverse organizations in Boston. They're always having events or things. Or I make friends with them. We're, you know, um, I'm working with a uh, Latino, Latino organization in the South End. So what I do for lunch yesterday, get together with some of them and go to this fantastic Puerto Rican restaurant. I mean, you know, Veggie Hauntas, if you haven't been there. It's all, you know, authentic. Everyone's speaking Spanish. Um, so I sound like a workaholic, but it's not. I mean, so but you're, what's nice is your work is your passion. My work is a passion, and, and that, the people are, and the things that we do. I mean, yeah. it's just, yeah. Well, I, I, I laugh. One of my passions, and John and I have been doing a lot of this, is, and I don't think it really qualifies as a hobby. I love to eat. I love to cook, <laughs> and I love to eat. And yeah. we've been doing, like we did yeah. Oyster oh, Fest and Wellfleet well well yeah. last week. And it was so funny. Yeah. There were a lot of Hopkintonians down there, really? more than I ran into, but we ran into some, and then others I just saw through social media. They're like, I was there, I was there. Yeah. It was, it was fun, and, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I just had dinner the other night at um, Central Public House. Oh, and love that it. was nice and enjoyable and and i love that we're expanding our options here in town at places if you haven't eat. been i mean i've been twice already yeah it's delicious and the, it's beautiful in there well, it's, and, i love and, it you know shout out there's all kinds of we're starting to have really good restaurants here in town and choices if they, yeah they run the spectrum i thought the prices were reasonable I, I thought price the and service was, was great and unique yeah fun things on the menu. Well, you know, speaking of fun, so I brought a client friend to Hopkinton, and this is Michelle. Okay. So second, you better be Oh, my goodness. And so she's like, met her at, at Pant. At Pat Panta, at Polly you know, so I brought her. Yeah, but you know, bringing friends from, and she just lives in Westboro, but is new to sort of Metro West, and just thinks Hopkinton is so adorable. And she went to, you know, join me at Central Public House and raved about the restaurant. I mean, there's a lot to well, do. Well, and you More know, to do. we still have, there's the spoon and one ten one ten grill and, and we've dynasty and I mean, thai and Co's and thai and Cornell's and Bills. I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sure I missed places. Oh, um, CJ Bittersweet. And, yeah, Bittersweet just got their liquor license. I love so it. So I'm so excited about that, and yeah. we're looking forward. You know, we're going to be more small bites and yeah, and, but. That's, um, but, but yeah. This is all good. Right, I know. The Muffin House or whatever. That's, yeah, you know, the, uh, Muffin the Man. I feel like a Muffin something at the Old Hop Gourmet. Yeah. So it's so you know, good stuff happening. Exactly. And, and you can still get, uh, Startline is doing their renovation. Oh, right. Water Fresh. Water Startline. Fresh. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I, yeah. sorry if I missed anybody. But, and there's but stuff, there's galas coming up and going on. I mean, the HCA will be having their thing. Yes. Um, Coming um, up pretty soon. Well, and tomorrow is the library um, anniversary. Anniversary of the open first house. Open. Yep. They're um, going to be doing some things. Steve know, Spector's playing yeah. there in the afternoon or something. So tonight, well, if yeah. you're watching the show, then you're missing it. But um, yep. they're doing books in bloom. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. uh, you know, belated shout out. Um, the cool stuff going on there. Yeah. I, we were talking earlier, and I've been in town now over 20 years. Mm hmm. Uh, I know it doesn't qualify me. I wasn't born in town, but I've been here a long time. <laughs> I think, but yep. when we first moved to town, there wasn't a lot to do oh, right. in town. Mm -hmm. You really either went to Worcester or Boston, mm -hmm. and maybe you went to Framingham Native. Um, and I look at the changes, and growth is hard, and it does mean change, and we're bursting at the seams in the schools and everything. But that's some good stuff oh, here yeah. in town. I Absolutely. love it. Oh, I, I love do too. It. It's really hard to, you know, because it... Um, 
I'm looking at selling the house in 2019 and thinking about where to go next, and I'm not even sure still. But one thing, it's hard to leave Hopkinton because of the friendships. You know, we lived there, we lived in our house over 20 years. And um, the fact that all these new things are opening, um, the fact that you can, you know, as a long-term resident, you fall in, you know, being newly single, being able to go places and sit down alone and be comfortable. Yes. Uh, that's a big change. I mean, you know, last time I was single, like 36 years ago, I mean, I never, you know, it's just, it's all so foreign. But doing it in a, transitioning like this in a community that you know well, with people that you know, it certainly makes it much more comfortable. Oh, it does. I guess. It does. And, yeah. And it is definitely, it's, it's nice to stay in your comfort zone. Yeah, yeah, I know. But then, you know, the flip well, side of that. Well, then you push it a little bit. Then you start, well, as I said, nobody ever asks you to type rope across the Grand Canyon. But if I ask you to <laughs> type rope six inches off the floor, you say, oh, I can do that because I'll survive that fall. Right, right. So, you know, <laughs> you do things in baby steps and you get out. And getting out by yourself is the first step. So you do it with things it, that yeah. are comfortable. Thank God for these, you know, when you're dining alone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But hopefully that won't be forever. Well, Who knows? you know, the other, and could you bring up something that's an interesting point? And um, there's been a lot of talk about mindfulness and being ah. present. Mm -hmm. And so while our devices are a good way to kind of make us feel secure, it's <laughs> yes. also important to yes, take exactly. in your surroundings. And well, you're better at talking to strangers, I call it. <laughs> you know, I'm a little bit more reserved. And I don't mean to be, but that's, you know, it's yep. just a, I don't know. I got to get better. I didn't I used that. to be, yeah. but I, I'll give you the type of example. Mm -hmm. So I used to always have to go out with what, you know, I'd have to go with somebody. Mm -hmm. And I was doing this professionally. I had to network. I had to right. meet people. Yeah. I had to build a business. And so I always went with somebody that I knew. And then I would take them up to people I didn't know and introduce them. Mm -hmm. It was my way of, That's a instead good of me introducing myself, yeah. it was sort of the buddy system. Mm -hmm. And it was just a safe way. And so now I'm comfortable. Sometimes I'll be down at the Cape and I'll go to this one restaurant that's around the corner from the house. And, and you know, I'm by myself. And I'll sit and have dinner at the bar. But I'll just chat with somebody next to me. It's like, so, are you here in town visiting? What are yeah. you doing? Do you live here? Uh, and it's just... But I've gotten that way right, from right. all the stuff before. Right. right. So now it feels like I'm type roping across the Grand Canyon to you, but I'm not. Yeah, I got I got to get better because I've always done networking for work. Right. And stuff, but now when that, when that's not the, the purpose, it's a little bit more challenging for me. Interestingly enough, and even okay, this is another kind of optic thing, going to sit at the bar. Yep. Okay. Now, um, that's a typical place where you go if you're going to be a onesie. And, yeah, I mean, that's an easy way to sort of, but you know, I have to say, I prefer restaurants and places where the bar is round, because what I don't like, personally, is sitting at a bar where my back is to the door and back to all the action. And all I'm staring at are liquor bottles and a mirror or the person. I don't, I don't like that. I like yeah. to sit where I can see you out. Can so see. I love the bar at, like, Bill's or Pan well, Thai or Grill. We, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, or, or when they have a high top, so it's not at the bar, but you're kind of at the bar. Yeah, I like the bar area. Like, that's yeah, always more it. fun. Like, um, I love Tavolino's a lot. And yes. I, love, I never eat in the dining room, although it's fine there. But I like the bar room. Mm -hmm. and with, I'm with a small group or one yep, person yep. or on my own. Um, one of my other favorite restaurants around here, too, is the Aegean. Oh. in Framingham. And that's also because I love the food, but I also like they have a large bar area for you can be at a high top table or you can be sitting there. Yeah. I'm going on and I won't, but I, I have to, you know, now that I'm navigating the world as an individual, the other thing I I have a, a pet peeve about is when you go to a restaurant and all of a sudden the host's face drops when you say just okay. one. They look around. I think this sense they look around and find some little table in the back of the kitchen. There you go, honey. I mean, they don't say that. But that's, you know, it's just a sense of well, feeling. Well, it is, a, a, it is a different navigation. Than um, when you come in with two or and, a group. And you do f sometimes feel a little, it, it's different. It is it's different. different. And I, you know, I almost feel like, hmm, there should be restaurants where there's like small tables where you can feel like, you know, you're not <laughs> inconveniencing folks because it's just one of you. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's okay. Like, yeah, it's a whole new new thing. It's but, a whole uh, new thing. It's a whole new avenue, but, yeah, but, but all fun, all fun. But I, I do, you know, I, I like change, honestly, when I think about over my well, whole life. It's fall. It's, it's exciting. Change. Exactly. The you only know? thing that's constant is change. That's right. 
That's right. Can only get that death and taxes. Mm -hmm. so. And people say, you know, we don't fear change. We fear the loss that comes with change or the perception of loss. You know, so when, when there's a change and you're going to gain something from it, we say bring it on. But when it's a change and we're going to lose, like, you know, the commute's going to be different, you know, different leader, different boss, whatever, or different life. Um, there's a loss of what you had before in some an, levels. That, I never thought of it like that yeah. because I've always like, okay, yeah. you know, change is inevitable. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. And I think, you know. Interesting, interesting. And I also think about when we, as we, when we grow up, how much change that we experience as kids in our families. Um, we experience a lot of change. And nothing terrible, but I mean, you know, my parents' father career change. We'd go from, you know, we'd move. You know, we didn't grow up in the same house like okay. my my um my husband he you know grew up his, his they the house he was born in was the house that they, his parents still i mean they're gone now but the but house the, they still the have. family still owns right and nothing's wrong with that i mean that's awesome and that's you know maybe that's the desire but i think there's some disruptions in life are probably healthy for kids it builds your resilience <laughs> That's what my dad used to say well, when we go, you know, we're I, leaving town, kids, we're moving to so I look at it differently. Um, to me, by allowing change to occur and embracing change, and particularly for your kids, yes. you're better equipping them because you don't want them to be myopic and to only have a world that is homogenous right. or does not uh, constant because that is not the real life that's right they've got to so. learn how to you know navigate change whether it's a new school or whatever yep. i mean some people said to me when we moved here my oldest was in sixth grade how can you move now she's she's big she's I'm like she's gonna have to figure it out yeah. you know and she did and it was fine you yeah. know i think it's hard <laughs> when you're kids are yeah. i'm just laughing we've gone oh, 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 no. so halloween's coming up yes. vote, vote vote don't forget vote. to vote that's a bit oh, wait, wait, there's competition Yes. Most voter turnout between the towns of Hopkinton, Ashland, and Holliston. So go vote because we want to win. That's right. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah, good to see you. Glad oh, you're goodness. feeling better. Yeah, Glad your cold yeah. is better. Oh, Glad goodness. you're not contagious. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. That, yeah, fall. Yeah. It ch changed. I got a bad cold. Absolutely. We'll over see it. you soon. Cheers. See you again soon. Thanks, Thanks for, for joining us. us. Have a great Halloween. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you.